Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators, otherwise known as SARMs. Now, typically these are used by people who are looking for a little bit of chemical assistance, but may not necessarily want to use fully fledged anabolic steroids. Now these are becoming increasingly popular and many of them are sold in the same way that dietary supplements are sold. You can Google them, look online, find a retail store and purchase a SARM. Now I'm not gonna talk about their effects or their side effects or their legal status or anything like that. What I'm gonna talk about is the purity of what you are buying. When you are buying a SARM online, what's the likelihood that you are actually getting what is on the label? So a recently published study purchased 44 products marketed as SARMs and sent them off for analysis. Out of those 44 products, how many of them do you think accurately contained what was listed on the label? Go on, have a guess. Now of these 44, only 23 of them actually contained one or more SARM. Now this is due in part due to marketing. For example, it is common for the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor agonist, known as GW501516, to be sold as a SARM, but it isn't actually a SARM at all. Now, some people would claim that this is just a marketing issue. I would claim that it's still misleading because if someone is marketing a product as a SARM and someone is going online and Googling it and this is a product that's coming up, I would still view this as misleading. But technically, a product like this could contain exactly what is on the label. It just doesn't actually contain a SARM. So marketing aside, let's look into the accuracy of the label claims. Only 18 of 44 products, that's 41%, actually contained what was claimed on the label in the doses that were on the label. Only 18 of 44 products. In 11, the compound was detected, but in amounts different to what it claimed on the label. A couple of the worst offenders on this, one product which claimed to contain 10 milligrams of GW501516 per capsule, only actually contained 0.1 to one milligram per capsule. That is between one hundredth to one tenth of what the product claims. Likewise, one product which contained LGD4033, again, only contained between one hundredth and one tenth of the dosage that it claimed. In eight products, the compound listed on the label was not found at all. However, other substances not listed on the label were found. This potentially means that people purchasing a SARM may feel physiological effect. However, that effect is coming down to another drug that they were unwillingly taking not actually the thing they were purchasing it for. Three products contained substances as per the label in the doses listed on the label. However, they also contained substances which weren't listed on the label. These included tamoxifen and GW501516. And my favorite one of all, four products had no active substances detected whatsoever. None of the active ingredient listed on the label, no active ingredients not listed on the label, nothing. So if we use this study as accurate representation of the market on the whole, we can conclude that approximately only 52% of the products marketed as SARMs actually contain any SARMs at all. So you can pretty much flip a coin, heads or tails, that is the chance that something marketed as a SARM actually contains a SARM. 39% will contain another unapproved drug, not a SARM. 25% will contain a substance not listed on the label. And 9% of products will contain no active substance at all. That means that only 41% of products accurately contain what is listed on the label. The amount of substances found in the remaining 59% of products differed significantly to what was listed on the label. Now this leaves a, a begging question for me. We know that bodybuilders have um, liberal use of pharmaceuticals and many people out there, perhaps yourself included, may consider yourself a bit of a human guinea pig and you're happy to ingest uh, substances which may not be legal or may not be manufactured to uh, strict controls. Question is, are you happy to ingest something knowing that there's less than a 50% chance that what you're ingesting is what you think it is in the dose you think it is? So if you're purchasing a SARM and that product contains a SARM, you don't necessarily know that it's the same dose as what's on the label. Likewise, if you're purchasing a SARM, you don't know that the substance in it is actually even what's on the label. So although you may consider yourself a bit of a human guinea pig, 
Are you happy to be a guinea pig with something that you don't know what you're taking? That is one of many reasons, admittedly, that I personally don't ingest these substances. Even if I wanted to, the idea of purchasing something which has a strong likelihood that there is a discrepancy between what I'm ingesting and what I think I'm ingesting, yeah, that doesn't tickle my fancy, if I'm honest. So each to their own. I'm just giving you the figures. Do with them what you wish. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you.